Hey everyone, Jim and Chris back with another highlight video. This is an important one. This is a, not a loaded question. This is something I really want to dig into because I talk to clients and all sorts of investors on this all the time. I want to ask you, as my partner, is it better to own three houses or one house? Well, you know. Let I'm going to need more I'm going to need I'm going to need more variables than that. I thought there was going to be a loaded <laughs> question here. And, so, and so you let me, know let me some ask of you a couple of questions. Yes. So <laughs> How's the market? Great question. How is the uh, long-term appreciation uh, prospects? Okay. How reliable is the expected cash flow? Mm -hmm. Mom, what makes reliable expected cash flow? Let's talk about these houses themselves. Well, we, we might need to delve back into my history and your history. Ah, okay, now it's getting interesting. So, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to admit this at this point in time. I feel like I should have known better at the time than I didn't. But uh, when we first got started, you know, which was well after you got started, you know, you've been in the business a lot longer than I have. My dad and I started buying houses and we thought more was better. So did I. Yeah. Uh, the problem was, is we were buying bad houses in rough neighborhoods that required a lot of maintenance. So we had a lot of them. That just means we had a lot more problems. Yeah. And so, you know, that, you know, that's of course, you know, why, you know, well, I got to ask you the, qu the, the qualifying questions. Well, this is what I wanted to get uh, to because there are major qualifying questions. But when I first was taught into real estate, and obviously, even though you came in a little later, you got kind of the same message. If you own a ton of properties, things are great. Yeah. And we've learned in our, and you can pull up your portfolio, mine of personal, uh, and even the company, own less of better quality with less leverage. Yeah. That was something huge that I had to come up because I had this thing, man, if I can, for me, it was the 100 house club. Once I can get to the 100 house, man, life is easy. But then I almost, I doubled that 100 house club and I'm going, wait a minute, these are turning over. The maintenance bills are way higher than I thought. I didn't get everything fixed that I thought. The turnover, the area isn't appreciating. And so I had to say, maybe if I just owned less in better areas, better qualities, that was easier to manage. The cash flow become more predictable yeah. and you saw the same thing and that's kind of yeah. what, what brought about bill to rent well and that's yeah i mean it, well and it, and it started with reo to rent right yeah and um you know when i started was in you know late 2009 early 2010 and you know i'm going to tell you you know if i bought a third of the number of properties that i bought in 2010 11 12 you know i would have made three times as much money by, you now, know. unpack that though, because sure. this is a very important message that I had, this, you know, I had the yeah. same experience. So, you know, I've often said, you know, there were, you know, there were a lot of properties, you know, that, I mean, hell, back then, I mean, some of the properties we were buying, we were buying for $12,000. Yeah. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. you know these, these properties were cheap, but there were other properties that were $40,000. And I said, oh my God, you know, I'm I not can buy about. three of these 12,000 instead of one of the 40, right? right. Yeah. So clearly, uh, I thought that the, that the, Twelve thousand dollar properties were better, but you know, as it turns out, and you know, uh, you know, I feel like I you know, should have known this then, but I didn't. Um, you know, the the forty thousand dollar property that I could have bought, you know, ultimately, you know, went up to be worth two hundred thousand dollars. The twelve thousand dollar property that I bought ultimately went up to be worth sixty thousand dollars. With a lot more turnover, right? Harder to manage, more bigger problems. Like I always think of. Remember that movie, Tom Hanks, The Money Pit? Yeah. And that's what I saw with these smaller, cheaper properties. And the reason we brought this up today for all of you is just to have an open dialogue of our history. Again, learn from our wounds. A, a cheaper property, look, if that's all you can afford, it'd be a great way to get in. But a lot of people say, if I can stack up, stack up more of a volume of ownership, I'll be more successful than if I had less properties. And that's not true because I know you and I personally our personal you know taking the company aside uh, for for property ownership our own portfolios are much lower in in numbers but we have more equity and more cash flow than we've ever yeah. had and that is the lesson that I really want to impart to all you guys I mean what well, just comes down to desirability yeah right so in a in a down market 
you know, the, the, you know, all properties are going to lose value, right? You know, that's just, that's what it's going to be, you know, but you know, when, when that market recovers, you see the properties in the better neighborhoods, A, they recover much faster and, you know, B, they reach new heights. You know, when you, when you buy in these, you know, lower end areas, Tougher areas you know, yeah. these, these tough neighborhoods, the, the, the fluctuate, you know, they're just never going to get above a certain, you know, dollar amount because people just don't want to live there. Yeah. So, you know, if people are living there because they have to live there versus because they want to live there, you know, you're, you're really going to limit yourself. So that, that is ultimately, you know, I mean, that's why we build where we build today, right? You know, because we get to pick where we build. You know, when we were buying at the auction, it was really, hey, whatever came up at the auction is what we had to pick from. That was it. And, you know, so, you know, by, by default, you're, you know, you're almost uh, forced to, towards the, you know, the lower end of the property spectrum, you know, when you're, when you're buying at the foreclosure auction. And in that sideways market, and look, real estate goes flat and real estate can go down. And what I learned in 2007, 2008, the toughest real estate market in 100 years. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just a fact was when I had more of these properties, well, I had more turnover, more maintenance and repairs in these tougher areas that nearly bankrupt me. And if I had just owned less property of better quality with less leverage, I would have been able to see that through easier with a lot less sleepless nights. I don't want to see any of you guys have sleepless nights. So before you, you go for just the volume, is I'd always ask about the quality, you know, because one property can absolutely outperform three so-so properties. And that's not only in when the market goes down, but also in, in the good times when it appreciates up both in value and rental increase. Yeah, and, and I would say the, the biggest mistake that I see people make is letting their pro forma fool them. You know, so this is this is a constant. That guaranteed, well, the, what, I, what I think both of us were raised on, and it's a solid <coughs> principle, I want to be clear on this, the 1% principle. 1% rule, 1% rule. That sounds really good in theory, but it's very hard for the performer to match the overabundance of turnover, the surprise maintenance and repairs that you thought you got in the initial rehab, but on these homes from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you just didn't see. You just weren't depending on. I mean, we called it, you know, the three-year curse. After three years, huge repairs started to come in, which we haven't seen in a decade of new construction. Yeah, it, you know, and I think that to, today, you know, honestly, the the one percent rule is, you know, I mean, it's virtually impossible to to meet. You know, I mean, we've, you know, we've done some studies, you know, internally because we've said, well, hey, you know, let's, you know, let's look and you know see is there anything worth buying? You know, there's, and, and there's not. You know, we we haven't found anything that 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 was. I mean, we just did a study as as recently as six months ago. Um, and we just, you know, we couldn't see, you know, where we could make that that one percent rule work for older construction properties, where we could find something that would actually meet that one percent yeah. rule, you know. And, and obviously, we do new construction now, so you know, the 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 percentages are different, you know, because your insurance is less, you know, your turnover is less. But this is all kind of the points that you're talking about. Yep. And, and when I say, you know, let you know, don't let the pro forma fool you. Um, you know, you can plug in all these numbers and think that you're going to have these super low maintenance costs and super low turn costs. And it feels you know, good to do that in the beginning, right? Doesn't it? Yeah, and and super <laughs> low vacancy. But the reality is, you know, the the lower the rent, in general, you know, this is a general statement. I mean, this is not, you know, obviously not every single property, but in general, you know, the lower rent that you're that you're getting, you're going to have, you know, maintenance is going to be a higher percentage of that. So, yeah. you know, if your rent is and turnover, right? If you're if you're you know if your rent is, you know, nine hundred dollars a month, uh, and you've got to replace your water heater, well, that water heater costs the same amount as you know in a in a nine hundred dollar a month house as it costs in an eighteen hundred dollar a month house. Very good point. So you know a, you know any item that you buy as a percentage of rent is going to be significantly more. Well not only that, if you if if your equity too, you know, the selling cost to sell three properties opposed to one property yeah. is triple. Yeah. You know, and that's something you have to look at. So we bring up these points because it's something that's been approached to me by family and friends who said, hey I'm just getting into real estate by many of our investors, by our own history, you know, with our investing. And it's an important question to ask, is three properties better than one? 
And as Chris pointed out right in the beginning, it is a loaded question because you have to look below the surface. You have to know the condition of those properties. Where are they? Will, how will they perform not just in the next 12 months, but the next 36 months? And when you start to unpack that, what Chris and I have found for ourselves, for our investors, is it is better to own better qual less with better quality and less leverage. And that puts you in that position to continually grow with less headaches because again, you're building this portfolio to serve you, not to serve the portfolio. And I think for a number of years, you and I were serving our old portfolios Absolutely. instead of letting it, you know, buy back our time and, and leverage us into the things we really want to be involved with. So keep that in mind as you grow your portfolio, whether you work with us or someone else, just know you don't need to have this huge quantity, especially if it's losing you sleep and, and money every month, you can have a smaller portfolio that's more effective for the goals you want to get to. Now, if you can have three properties in a really good neighborhood with great rents and a lot of desirability, I pick that one. I agree. But if you can only own, if you can own one really solid property that's at a higher price, probably towards the medium, or three bottom of the barrels in a tough neighborhood, which one will you take? Higher price every time. Me too. Yeah. And that's from blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of years. Uh, but again, we just wanted to share this with you because it's a common question that comes up. We'll talk to you more about this. Thanks for joining us on this one. Thanks, everybody. Take care.